Hello everyone. Recently, my wife and I traveled to Mount Gambier driving a Tesla Model Y. We spent two nights camping, sleeping in the Tesla. In this video, I share the experience and the things I've learned. We started from Doncaster Shopping Center that has Tesla destination charges. We arrived early in the morning to make sure the charges are available. Our destination for day one is Port Ferry. When we set it in Tesla's navigation, it directs us first to the supercharger at Colac. It only knows Tesla charger, which isn't ideal because there are more third-party chargers available. So I planned the trip myself. Our first stop is Geelong. Next to the beach, there are a number of EV chargers provided by local council. They're free to use. When we arrive there, we have 68% battery left. It took us one hour to charge to full. During the time, we walked around the beautiful beach and had an overpriced breakfast, aka brunch. Then we drove to number one Great Ocean Road. There's an RACV resort at Torquay. It has a number of chargers available. Given that we've just charged to 100% at Geelong, we didn't have to charge at Torquay, but just want to come in and have a look. What we found was the chargers were not working. Probably the electricity part is good, but for some reason it doesn't connect to the internet. So the app shows they are not usable and you need to use the app to activate it, which is a shame. I heard in this case you can use an RFID card, which stands for Radio Frequency Identification Card, and use it even if the charger is not online. Our next stop is Lawn, a lovely beach side town with friendly people. The car park next to the visitor information center has two EV chargers. When we arrived, the EV parking space were fully occupied by non-EVs. We asked the staff if there are other chargers available around. The staff told us they are going to install more chargers soon. Also, an EV-only sign will be installed. While we were talking, the owner of one of the cars came and we explained to him that we need to charge our car here. The guy happily moved his car to another parking space. Our next stop is the Twelve Apostles. From Lawn, we first went to Colac and charged the car using the supercharger. This was the first time I used the supercharger. As its name says, it's super fast. Charged from less than 50% to 100% in about 40 minutes. During the time, we bought some food at the supermarket. While the car is charging, it generates a noticeable humming noise. I did some research and found it's the cooling system doing its work. We've been visiting the 12 apostles in the past, and we never had a time when the weather's perfect, including this time. The cloudy weather renders the apostles a feeling of loneliness, the kind of loneliness that put the apostles apart from the modern world where people focus on material. I had to process the photos into black and white to align with this feeling, and this one definitely reminds me of the old man and the sea. When we arrived at the campsite at Port Ferry, it was a bit late, as it gets darker and darker, it's not easy to set up everything, including the tent. We try to keep our noise as low as possible to not disturb other people. It was a hassle. Spring has started and mosquitoes are everywhere. I brought a moxibustion stick, which is a form of therapy that entails the burning of markwood leaves. It's commonly used in Chinese medicine. Here I use it as a repel, not only for mosquitoes, but also works for many types of bugs. Also, it can be used as an incense, offering to all the bugs the car has hit and killed on the way, wishing their soul can now be in a better place. Next morning, we walked around the town. The weather was down with a high moisture level. We didn't spend too much time at Port Ferry because we want to get to the next campsite early so that we don't have to set up in the dark. From Port Ferry to Mount Gambier, it's around 160 kilometers. The challenge is Mount Gambier doesn't have any supercharger at the moment. There's one being constructed. We found a destination charger at a hotel restaurant, but it has only one charging port. When we came there, another car was using it, so we could only charge at campsite with the mobile connector, which gives us only 2 kilowatts per hour. And we don't want to charge while sleeping inside. Plus, it was raining every now and then, and I'm not keen on using the mobile connector in the rain, although Tesla vaguely says it's okay. On day three, we went to the hotel restaurant that has the destination charger. Luckily, the only charging port is free, so we left our car there and also left our contact details with the reception, just in case if someone else wants to use it. We played around, then came back and had lunch there. That's how destination charger is supposed to work. 
Technically, we could leave our car charging there and drive it away without telling the reception. But if everyone does this, then it may end up with no one able to use the charger. A few years ago, we traveled to Adelaide during Christmas and visited Mount Gambier on the way. The weather at that time was much better. Now the spring just started and the greens are not very colorful. The blue lake is always nice because its color changes depending on light condition, which are different at different times during the day. So every time you see it, you may see a new type of blue. Just when we enjoy the scenery, half of the afternoon has passed. We have to get back to Melbourne. We went from Mount Gambier to Wollongbo to charge our car, and then back to Geelong to have a dinner while charging at the free station. Finally, we got back home and finished the trip. So here's a list of lessons I learned which may be useful if you have planned for similar trips. First of all, get an IFID card in case if the charger can't connect to network. If the charging part is working, just a network connection has problem. You may still activate the charging machine using the card. Second, Plan your trip carefully because the number of chargers at this stage are way behind the number of petrol stations. We can't assume the chargers will be always available. It may be broken or someone else may be using it and you can't find that person in a short period of time. Next, arrive at campsite early so you have enough time to set up before it's dark. Also, don't bring too much stuff if you can buy them on the way while charging at places like shopping center or next to supermarket. We got bottled water, instant noodles, and so many things that we carry from the beginning, which adds extra weight and probably has some impact on the battery as well. The last lesson I learned may not be applicable to everyone. We spent three days and two nights in total. Each day we had to set up the tent and the mattress, and next morning we had to clean it up. It feels like traveling for the sake of traveling. I'd rather stay in one place for a few days and visit the place as well as surroundings in depth. Trip to me is the rest of busy life. There's no point making it as busy as normal working day. So this is all for the video. I hope you enjoy it. If you do, please like it and comment if you have any question. See you next time.